Hi guys, uh, Dave Daniel, the CEO and founder here with Steve Feinberg, the creator of Speedball. Fitness. How are you? Hello. Steve, pleasure. Thank you very much for coming. My pleasure to be here today. The reason I asked Steve to speak to you guys is, uh, well, there's quite a few reasons, but Steve is a personal trainer of many, many years. I'll tell you a little bit more about his background, but he also has very, very successful uh, kettlebell group exercise classes that he runs sort of all over the city. And uh, we got to talking and we were doing some really, you brought up some great points that I thought would be very valuable for group exercise directors to hear, personal fitness directors, trainers, group ex people. It's just a really, you, you brought up some great points. But why don't you start out first by telling people about who you are, you, you know, your training background, your group ex background, the whole thing. Sure. Hi. <laughs> Steve Feinberg, if you don't know me, nice to meet you. I operate mostly in New York, but my company now is global, so we're in Europe and, and hopefully infecting other countries year by year and other continents. Um, I've been a trainer for almost 17 years and been in group fitness for almost that equal length of time. I was a martial arts instructor first. I've been in a private facility. I now work for companies like Equinox, and I've worked for Sports Club LA and Reebok Sports Club and the JCC, and I run everything from child youth programs to grown, grown adult programs. Um, and I've been working with kettlebells for a long time. I work out with guys with right. kettlebells. I work with professional fighters, boxers, and, and, and work out with MMA guys. Kettlebells are a very important tool. Uh, they're an old tool, they're an important tool. Um, and I feel like there's a, there's a gap in the understanding between the difference of the adaptation of group fitness kettlebells and the solid power work and personal training that you might see in a one-on-one -on -one or in a small group scenario or a CrossFit scenario, something like that. Sure, sure. A lot of people are using kettlebells these days. Um, and they're really apples and oranges. They're different animals. And that's what I think is missing in the understanding. Okay, and so maybe you can go a little bit further. Yeah, in absolutely. So my supposition is I've been teaching kettlebells through, uh, through kettlebell concepts for a while, a couple of years now, since I did my workshop at Equinox. Um, and what I've found is that my kettlebell classes stay full and stay on the schedule where many others have not. And I believe the reasoning is because, A, I keep it very kettlebell. It's not a cardio sculpt toy. It's not a dumbbell with a handle. Right. I don't turn it into something else. I keep it the way it right, is. Right. So I limit the amount of movements I use. I keep them pretty pure. Uh -huh. Also recognizing that it's a smaller version of the tool, right. obviously. Um, and to manage a, a larger room, I think simplicity, I think less is more in some cases rather than complex choreography. Right. Um, and I've made uh, relationships with the personal trainers in the building because as I said, I'm a personal trainer first uh -huh. and secondarily also a group exercise instructor. So I maintain my own clients in various personal training gyms and in people's homes. And kettlebells is a staple for me uh -huh. I, with almost all of my apparently healthy clients. Um, and the reasoning uh, uh, behind that is the trainers, uh, get to know me and they have a, they understand that if they send their clients to my classes their clients won't get hurt right. especially if they train kettlebells with them because they're using much heavier load respectable levels of load uh -huh. well above 10 percent of your own personal body weight which right. is where you make that transition to actual strength work mm -hmm. as opposed to the smaller versions that are available in the group fitness rooms today right. still it should still be hip driven inertia driven motion the, the technique doesn't change. Right. And uh, so we teach that, we teach it and we preach it, each and every class. But by, by people who would have not touched a kettlebell first but do take group exercise classes and fear the funny little thing with the handle, coming into a room and doing it together and getting that same feeling in that group spirit, eventually, a handful at least, always say, so you know, how do I do this better? Or what happens if I get one that's heavier? Or what happens if I want to do this on my own, what do I do? Well, don't do it by yourself. It's always my explanation, unless you're doing the things that I've shown you and the things that I've shown you only, mm -hmm. and only increase your load X amount. Instead, talk to a personal trainer. Here, talk to my buddy. Talk to my buddy John. Uh -huh. uh, or talk to your group fitness manager. They'll, they'll put you into the personal training department. They'll direct you. Um, and if there was better communication, which I have, yeah. um, rare, but yes. Rare, yeah. but there are, there are other people like me who are trainers, and group fitness instructors who bond with trainers very easily, even though we're, we're location jumping shapeshifters, sure. where it's not our home. If the personal trainers realized that 
kettlebells in a group is not the enemy and that we're not taking clients away. In fact, what we're doing is possibly you know, milling the soil. We're, we're, we're farming the market, possibly. Yeah, that was a good point you brought up, the we're, farm system. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like you know, the minors versus the major leagues. And it's this simple. If I've never touched a kettlebell before, I am probably, it is probably a reason why. Right. And I am not going to necessarily buy a session immediately with a personal trainer to touch something I didn't want to touch in the first place and spend a bunch of money on it. Right. However, if I'm a person who takes group exercise classes regularly, trusts an instructor or trusts a club, and decides to pick up one of the little ones that they see because it looks like fun. Right. And you have an instructor who recites the ABCs of kettlebell training yeah, in the beginning. beginning. Absolutely, right. in the All beginning right. of every class. Talking about the movements and doing the movements before the music goes on and telling them that it's not choreography and it's not beat driven. Uh -huh because we're all different lengths and different sizes and have different resistance levels, so you can't possibly be incurring rotational inertia all at the same time. It's a ridiculous thought. Right, right. Um, but then people take that, that, that a little foothold, they get their toe into the water, and then hopefully they take that next step and ask the question, or you have an instructor like myself who says at the end of the class, remember, if you want to learn more about these things, there's a staff of people waiting for you who love these things, who want to talk to you about it. Right. You know, and I got some friends, I can, I can hook you up. Likewise, if you want to keep your classes populated and your group fitness instructor, yeah, talk about that a bit. get friendly with the, with, your, with the PT manager and with the trainers and say, look, I love this thing. I love it in a different way that you do. I use it in this setting in a slightly different way than you do. Right. The one thing you know is they're going to have fun and get a good sweat and they're definitely not going to bang themselves up compared to what they've got on the floor. Sure. I can introduce them to the basic movements or I can maintain them on the days that you're not in. It comes with their membership. Send them to me. If they don't like it, they don't like it. Right. If you don't like it, you hear things you don't like, give me feedback. I'm not above feedback, but let's try it. Let's, let's get a two-way street going. Right. And I've had great success with that. So from a, from a uh, marketing standpoint, this is something that, we, that I brought up to you a while ago. The, I've been on the phone with, with certain clubs where the personal training director, the group exercise director are literally on the phone at the same time. Mm. And they're kind of like sniping at each other saying... Back and forth. Exactly. Like, no, no, we want kettlebells because that goes to our revenue center and you're going to cannibalize our registrants. And no, no, we want them in the group X for retention and so on and so forth. They were literally... Kind of, and I had to sort of be a mediator. To, to explain, to try and explain to them what I'm saying, what you're saying, you know, and it, 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 got, it they have to hear it from you, they really do. Well, what I think is, if you're looking at each other as two Granny Smiths, you're going to be you're going to be nervous about who takes a bite. But if one of you is a Red Delicious and the other one of you is a Granny Smith, there's a preference thing there. Number one and number two, it's good to try new things. Right. It's good for everyone in the gym to try new things, right. as long as it's safe and it's presented properly. Right. So they shouldn't look at each other as competitive. They should see each other as cooperative. Hey. You'll bring us, hopefully, a new market. They should run specials. If I was a group fitness manager or a group fitness director in a regional area of a club uh -huh. and I wanted to improve for my company both sides of the fence, I would say, let's do a fun series of classes, membership drives at off times, and let's invite people who have never touched one in before to try one with somebody who's been on the news or something and it's right. you know, a cool class, right? And then let's set up and establish a reduced rate, small package, small group or personal training add-on after that. If you took these classes, if you signed in for these classes, feel free to follow up at 30% discount with this trainer for a three block set on how to really use the kettlebell and get more of a benefit, more of a bang for your buck. Get a heavier bell, create more training effect, right. blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. And then you can, you can go from point A to point B to point C pretty easily. Members who weren't going to touch it before in the room, file them for a discount, have them continue to buy, and you create a sustainable circle. But right. everybody's got to be in on it together for that to work. It's, right. Yeah, it could be symbiotic, though. They're really not competitive. They're, they're nearly apples and oranges. I mean, they're apples, but they're very different color. No, I, I agree completely. And what's the responses of people in your classes? You know, who, who, do, who may do both, for example. Oh, I, you know? that's, that's an interesting thing because it, it's fun to, to watch people take the next step and then return back to class and okay. like go right up in the front <laughs> and have a much heavier bell uh -huh. and you sort of look at them and you sort of both like nod and smile at each other. Right. And you, we all, you know, I know, you know, we know 
they don't know necessarily sure. those people who are coming in or have right. been but we know we know what's happening you're now going to increase your training effect every time you visit me uh -huh. because you have guidance yeah and now you've learned how to now you can do a couple of the short progressions that i do in class with confidence with a heavier Heavy bell yeah. yeah so now you're making more out of your free time because i come with your membership right. right because you're paying for qualified guidance on your other days you're now increasing the efficacy of every time you pick up a kettlebell. Right. And you've got reinforcement on both ends. Right, absolutely. Well, it's, uh, you heard it here first, folks. Actually, not really. We've been trying, we've been saying this. I'm sure this has been said before, yeah. But it's, I really think that there are, there's a, a, a misconception. There's a perception issue on how these two animals affect each other. And there are a lot of group fitness classes that use a kettlebell that aren't exclusively kettlebell classes. You know, they're in like a circuit training kind of class or something. There's right. a station with the kettlebell. And even that's enough if taught properly by an instructor to inspire someone to want to know more. And right. there should be some sort of door opening for those who are already members who have now gotten a taste for kettlebells where the PT manager says, you know what, if people come from a group fitness class, and an instructor recommends them like a kettlebell ambassador, right. that kind of thing, and says, you know, I or like Greg Cook is a kettlebell ambassador. So if you take Greg Cook's class and you want to learn more, you can apply for a small discount for some sort of, you know, home remedy discount sure. with the PT department on a one, two, or three station package. Right. You know, something short term. Yeah. And then, well, then it's up to you guys, honestly. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a sales force. You, <laughs> you, you got to shut the door. I mean, but. <laughs> I don't see any reason why we can't hand them to you, and we're definitely not taking people away. You can't replace what we do, trainers. You can't make people feel that awesome group energy. You can't. It's not what you do. And we certainly can't replace the type of one-on-one -on -one attention to detail and orientation and personal sequencing for that person's ability and properly timed rest and small changes and adjustments, macro adjustments, micro adjustments in between sets. Right. We can't do that with 30 people in a room. Absolutely not. So yeah. why, why on earth would we try to do each other's jobs? Why don't we just do our jobs and then have it feed back and forth and oh yeah, no, he's, he's the fun guy with the kettlebells in the room. I'm the guy with the heavy ones out here, you know, and that's, right. that's fine. Yeah, well, you know, there's that whole, like, ego thing that trainers, you know. Yeah. Group fitness guys, too, sometimes. Sure. I'm not going to, yeah. Well, that's another conversation. Different but better. Right. That's what I would say. Different but better. It's, it, it's, it's okay that they're different animals, and it's better to be together than to be separate and throwing things over one side of the fence. Like, why, why, be, why be against each other when we can be together with each other? It makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to wrap it up, but before we do... Um, let's talk about something that's near and dear to your heart. Okay. Your speedball. Yes. Okay, you are the medicine ball king, right? <laughs> I, um, I'm, I'm becoming to a degree. Well, you're doing, you're doing more than that. You're all over Europe. Yes. So, so let's chat about the differences um, between what you do with speedball, how... And general medicine ball training and... and okay. Right. Okay. Cool. And kettlebells. Absolutely. And, yeah. So what I've done, and again, personal trainers... We're not replacing your medicine ball training with your people at home. I'm a different animal, and I'll explain why. Because Juan Carlos Santana is pretty much my medicine ball guru as okay. far as working with athletes or people one-on-one. -on -one. I've got a handful of his DVDs. I've got the big manual, the one like this, you know, <laughs> the, the, the athlete's guide to medicine ball training kind of okay. 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah, he's awesome. And, wow. and, but what I've done is I've taken some primary movements, and I've added some multi-vectoral dimensions to it and a little bit of my martial arts training and I've, okay. I've taken movements and I've put them in a sequence and it's a progressive multi-level sequence so that I can have a room full of apparently healthy 18 to 65 year olds okay. and everyone's going to be okay because of the baseline of my class and this is what's key I think besides the fact that it's fun and it's awesome uh, it's very very to no impact very very low to no right. So I can have a 65-year-old woman in class doing smaller range of motion movements and sticking to the level one with just a step. And I have a college athlete next to her leaping up in the air in between cool. at different times. Right. Um, but everybody's on the same, on a similar tempo. Everybody's got a similar feel. They're all welcome. Every Saturday morning, I've got an 80-something-year-old woman that comes into my class, stands right in the back. Okay. Everybody knows her. Everybody like salutes her, <laughs> sort of thing. But then I've got a room. You know, I've got the 24-year-olds in the front row and, right. and everybody in the middle in between. Okay. Um, and it's just. It's, it's, an, it's a replicable, practicable series of exercises that progress in a, in a sensible way 
through different planes and then different compounds and then going through from compound from multi-joint, multi-muscle to multi-vectoral on top of that. Right. Um, and that's what I think inspires people. Plus it continues to change and evolve all the time. That's great. Yeah. And you're doing this in Europe. Yeah, right? we partnered with, with International Fitness and Aerobics Academy. We're all over Germany, we're in Switzerland, we're in Austria. Uh, they're doing their own education in Austria for the first time. We were in Denmark this weekend. This was our first Denmark performance. Hopefully they'll latch on to it. Um, and we'll be in uh, Thailand by the end of the year and hopefully looking for a South America and to fill in some gaps and then some more here in right. our beloved US of A. But uh, it's, it's marketable and it's it's not that difficult to learn if you already have presence in queuing format and if you're a trainer that's wanted to cross over into group exercise. I get a lot. I get a lot of referrals from trainers to bring people into that class. They know I'm not going to break anybody and they always get a good sweat. We burn a high amount of calories and we focus on functional core stability in almost every, and hip mobility in almost everything we do. Um, which again, is, is some of the things that kettlebells focuses on, thoracic mobility and pelvic stability at different times. Right, right. You know, and so we get that same feeling with a much lower load. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know some of that of all that's very non-intimidating. You played with one when you were a kid. Sure, so sure. so yeah. that speedball fitness, that's what we do. We take a medicine ball, we move it around, we progress it step by step. There's measurable progress in every class. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And we're going to do something, or you're going to do something rather in Europe, talk, talk about oh, the yeah. and Let's touch on that just a little bit. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I do educations and convention performances for Speedball, and I'll be there for their large convention in Germany at the end of this year. Um, and they've instituted kettlebells in the group format, right. came from kettlebell concepts, came from my friend Corey in the first place. Right. And what I intend on doing is helping to take the group fitness animal that is kettlebells and smooth it out, package it so it's got clean lines, re-up the instructors, update them on Absolutely. perfect technique yeah. um, because I've seen some, some anomalies sure. and just be able to straighten those out and then actually hand them like Speedball has a format which has room for creativity right. but has a successful base and foundation. What, what I like about my kettlebells class is in a 45 minute class, the first 25 minutes is almost always the same. Because you never get too good for the basics, just Absolutely. like in boxing, right. you never get too good for your jab. Absolutely. And in, med in my medicine ball training, you never get too good for section one. Uh -huh. So there has to be that base, that martial thought process, that foundation, the stances, the basic movements. And then you can play later. You can have room to go virtuoso. You can be Oscar Peterson all you want, but right. at some point in time, you have to start with the drum line. Right, right. You know, and I that's like that's yeah. what I want to do for KBC when I'm in when I'm in Europe with Ifa. That's Ifa. great. Yeah. It's, it's, I, we compare it to yoga and Pilates and martial arts all the time. Yeah. It's, it's you have to have the basics, and you have to be able to ideally perform the basics. You know, with, with a with an appropriate weight eventually down the road. That's kind of where you want to get some of these folks to. Right. You know, you want them to to realize that yes, a woman can swing a 10 or a 15 pound kettlebell. Cause let's face it, that's what their purse weighs anyway. I mean, <laughs> so, like, let's hope that we can take them in the direction where a woman after taking class for X amount of months wants to swing a 20 or 25 pound exactly. kettlebell. And, but that again, Here's where we can bridge that gap towards personal training, can feed small group training. This is where you go. You go from a large group yeah. to a smaller Small group, group to an individual or, yeah. a, or a duo. Exactly. You know, step by step. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, the other, or the other direction. Either way. You know? Yeah. You know, I really appreciate your time. You know, guys, this was, I hope this was as valuable uh, for you as, as certainly it was hearing it for the first time for me. And, and I knew right out of the gate. I have to get Steve on camera here to, so he can share some of these experiences. Thank you again so much. My pleasure. Everybody. My pleasure. Check out uh, Speedball. Speedballfitness.com. Speedballfitness.com. Yep. Kettlebellconcepts.com. We're going to be hearing a lot more about uh, Steve Feinberg. So thank you again for your time and thank you for coming. Collaborate. Have a good day. All right. Take care. All right.